Well, hello everyone. Can you believe it? But it's bedtime already. Are you ready for bed? I don't know where the day's gone. I don't know what you've been doing today, but I've been very busy working at the hospital and looking after poorly people. So I am ready for bed and I'm tired. In fact, oh yeah. I'm nearly asleep, but we've got to have our story first, haven't we? Now, who have you got with you? Who do you take to bed? Uh, what's your favourite cuddly toy? I've got Bunny, and this is my grandson's favourite uh, soft toy when he comes to stay that he takes to bed with him. And I'm all ready now for the story. Oh, well, I've just forgotten something. Mentioning my grandson... It's reminded me that um, I told Ada and um, Barnaby and Joel that I'd got a secret to tell them. So I suppose I'd better tell you all before we have the story. Well, my grandson comes quite often to stay with me. And when he comes, this is his favourite soft toy that he takes to bed with him. But... We have something very special that we do. We climb into bed and then, do you know what it is? We have a picnic. Yes, a picnic in bed. We've always done this ever since he was about 18 months old. And that's our special treat. Um, shall I show you what we, what we have to eat? Well... We have some breadsticks, we have some grapes, and we have some chocolate. And then we have a glass of water. I don't know what your mummies will think, but we've always done that. It's just Joshua and my grandson and my special treat when he comes. You'll have to let me know if you do anything special. But now we're going to have the story before you all fall asleep. And the story today, it's a lovely little story. It's called The Littlest Watchman. One night on a quiet hillside, a little boy sat beside an old tree stump, watching and waiting. His name was Benjamin. And he was a watchman. Being a watchman was a pretty big job. Benjamin did his best to take it seriously. But the problem was that his main duty was to sit still and stare at a boring old tree stump, which made it kind of hard to stay interested. Even so, he knew that the people in his village counted on him. Benjamin's father was also a watchman and taught him all about it. You want me to stare at a tree stump? Benjamin had asked when he first learned of the watch. It's not about staring, son. It's about waiting, his father answered. Every day and every night, one of us is watching. We watch for the sign of the arrival of the king just like our maker promised. Benjamin's father had raised him to know the old, old stories of their people. He told him how once, long ago, their maker created the world and everything in it. All of it was very good. And the maker had created people to love him and care for his world. But something went terribly wrong. The people chose to follow their own plans. They disobeyed their maker and in doing so allowed a curse to enter the land. The curse of sin. The curse brought pain and sorrow into their lives and the lives of all their children. The world was still beautiful but now because of the curse it was broken. Worst of all the curse separated people from their maker. 
instead of living with him forever, they died. It all seemed rather hopeless. But things aren't always as they seem. Benjamin's father taught him that their maker had promised to send someone to undo the curse. He promised to send them a king who would rescue them and restore the whole world. Instead of leaving them like a useless stump, the maker promised that a new branch, one man, would grow his people into a fruitful tree. This man would come from the family of a man named Jesse. The maker told people to wait for his king and to trust in his promise. The watchmen did trust and they did their best to help others trust. They reminded the people about what the maker had said hundreds of years before. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. Even though the maker had been awfully quiet for many years now, the watchman still trusted his promises and kept a close lookout for the arrival of the promised king. Benjamin wanted to be a good watchman, but he found it difficult. For one thing, oh, it had become really boring. He tried to focus by tracing the rings of wood on the stump circling his eyes round and round as he thought about the maker's promise. But as hard as he tried, it took only a skittering bug or the hoot of an owl to make him completely lose track of where he was. Besides that, Benjamin struggled because everyone laughed at him. Sometimes other children from the village would throw things at him as he tried to stare at the stump. It was all very distracting. Then there were the shepherds. They often walked past him on their way to the fields. Most nights, Benjamin could hear them laughing and having a good time as they roamed the neighbouring hillside. They have all the fun, Benjamin often thought. They're not stuck looking at an old stump. I wish I could have been a shepherd instead of a watchman. Night after night, Benjamin kept watch, hoping that the long-awaited shoot would appear on the stump. But it never did. Nothing ever happened. One day, it became even harder for Benjamin to focus. The road below became very busy. Travellers started pouring past on the way to the village. There were people of all sorts, men and women, old and young, some on carts with donkeys, others walking. Benjamin even noticed a man helping a very pregnant woman slowly make her way along the road. Along with all these distractions, something deeper started to trouble Benjamin. He'd always believed the maker would send the promised king, but he couldn't help but wonder what was taking so long. Maybe we got the plan wrong, he began to think. Maybe he's not coming at all. The thought left him confused and a little ashamed. Benjamin had waited a long time and he wasn't sure if he could do it any more. He took his eyes off the stump. Shoulders slumping, Benjamin looked towards the shepherd's hill. Maybe I should just go become a shepherd, he thought. It seems I'm not cut out to be a watchman after all. But as he gazed towards the shepherds, Benjamin's eyes squinted and then widened. The shepherds were not alone. In the sky above them, a single light shone down. Suddenly, a glorious brightness lit up the night sky over the shepherds. Shading his eyes, Benjamin could see a host of dotted lights within the larger glow. He, he couldn't make out the words, but he could hear that the lights were singing, joyously singing. Benjamin sat spellbound 
as he took in the light and melody. It was so beautiful he never wanted it to end. And yet, something drew his attention back to the old stump. Benjamin's eyes had been trained to know every detail of the stump. It never changed. It had always been the same. It wasn't now. Growing out of the hardened wood, on the top of the stump, was a small green shoot. A great flood of joy filled Benjamin as he remembered the maker's promise. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. Quickly as he could, Benjamin jumped up and ran toward the village, down into Bethlehem, barely able to contain his excitement as he darted along the dark path. As he reached the edge of the sleeping houses, the words burst out of his mouth in a great shout, He's here! He's here! The king has come! Just then, the door of a small building swung open, and light from inside spilled out into the street. And Benjamin heard a familiar voice, the voice of one of the shepherds. Yes, the king has come. Would you like to come in and meet him? Well, I think that was a lovely story. I hope you enjoyed it. And let's just say a prayer before we settle down to sleep. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promise that you gave to your people long, long ago. The promise that you would send the King. And you kept that promise. And you sent King Jesus to be our Saviour and our friend. Thank you that you always keep your promises that you give us in your word and you never let us down. Be with us as we sleep now. May we wake tomorrow ready to serve you, whether we're at school or at work or in the home. Amen. <laughs>